that is the the programming without getting too deep that we've been susceptible to mm-hmm. since childbirth. You go to school, they're programming you. You got to yeah. raise your hand and ask a question. That's why when you grow up, you have a hard time talking in meetings. Mm. Because you need permission throughout your entire, you know, childhood, teenage years. Wow. So when you get in your performance review and they say, you know, we need you to speak up more. We need you to. And then they come to me and they say, I'm an introvert. I'm quite, no, you've been programmed. It's okay. We're going to get, we have to unlearn some things. Empower You podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners. We discuss a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, cultural, and societal perspective. We believe that through tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. Subscribe to our channel and let us empower you. Welcome to Empower You Podcast. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for being here. I am so excited about this next interview and um, I can barely contain it. So I wanna talk to you a little bit about what our topic is and then um, we're just gonna roll into it, bring our guest up and get started. So um, what we're gonna be talking about today is intentional investments, right? Um, I think what I'm hoping what you all are starting to gather here is that your life is a series of investments, right? We all enjoy our leisure time, our time when we're relaxing, chilling with our friends, going out, doing different things. But I just want you to understand that all of those decisions are creating a certain result. We are always sowing seeds into our future. And so the investments that we make into our personal time, into our space, into our education, into what we read, into what we watch, into the people we hang out with, into the fights and arguments that we have and the the the, the trashy music we like to listen to and our guilty pleasures, they're all investments. And so I have a guest with us who's gonna be telling us how to make intentional investments. It doesn't mean you don't enjoy your life, but if you're not mindful to make intentional investments, you're just going to kind of wind up with whatever life has to give you, which is not a great way to uh, live your life, okay? So my guest is a career advancement expert. Um, She's also an executive tech recruiter. We're going to talk about that. Um, She's a podcaster as well. Um, Her name is Kelly Jackson. She is absolutely incredible. I met her um, at Klein Attraction University, um, and she has just been so helpful to me. Um, And if you guys don't follow her, you're really, really missing out, especially as a young professional learning more things. So I'm going to go ahead and bring her up, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, 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 how are you, Miss Jackson? I'm good, I'm good, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you so much for being here. I understand that um, every hour that you spend doing anything is an investment, and so thank you for investing in Empower You Podcast. Absolutely, thank you so much for the invitation. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. So um, I just gave a little bit of a spiel about you, but Tell us about who you are um, and kind of what you do in your own words and and why you love it. Sure, sure. So it's it's weird kind of talking about yourself. Um, But I am a former talent acquisition leader. So I've worked throughout several, you know, Fortune 500, 100 companies. And from there, I began uh, Careers by Kelly. And this is a career development um, program for mid to senior level professionals. I also have a few staffing agencies. So my passion and my purpose and my calling is around um, helping professionals to advance in their career, whether it be monetarily or passion driven or what have you. So um, yeah, that's kind of me in a nutshell. That's amazing. So why do you love doing this? I mean, 
it sounds like it's a lot of anxiety. Right now, you know, 2020, people are saying that all young people are lazy and that there's no jobs, but now there's a lot of jobs, but then those jobs don't want to pay anybody. So now, you know, people are raising minimum wage. And there's just so much confusion there. Like, why do you love doing what you do? It's because I've seen a lot, you know, working in corporate America for the past 25 years and then working in what is considered the uh, core, which is human resources, and then in talent acquisition, where you are working with hiring managers who have an immediate need. And then on the flip side, there's your internal and external candidates who are looking for the next step up, right? Nobody wants to go backwards. And so I've been able to see both sides. I've seen hiring authorities abuse their authoritativeness. And then I've seen on the candidate side, again, both internally and externally, where they're not able to um, achieve and get to that next level, whether it be via title or monetarily. So Mm -hmm. my calling and my purpose is to share Um, how to do so different ways strategically and not so much tactically um, Mm. on how to get there so oh wow another thing that you said that uh, I thought was really interesting um, you said that it's not always that people are unhappy with the money there but you help them pursue their passions now Mm -hmm. in 2022 I thought everybody was just chasing the bag So are there really people who are making decisions based off of just what they truly enjoy doing that is not so much driven by the cost of inflation and all the different economic changes that are going on and Ukraine got the whole, you know, economy flipped upside down and all these different things we hear, you know, and Mm -hmm. when you said that earlier, I was like, Who's making mm-hmm. passion driven, you know, career choices? I just want to hear about that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. It's a great question. Well, let's let's think about it, right? You have the big quit, you have the mm-hmm. great resignation. These people okay. aren't just quitting their jobs and then sitting at home doing nothing. Mm-hmm. They're okay. actually going to find what is fulfilling for them. Where can I make an impact? Where can I feel valued? If you're working for someone that's toxic, that's intimidated by you, Mm -hmm. that is not um, championing championing your your career growth or where you want to be or advocating on your behalf and oppressing all the talent and creativity that you have and you feel like you're in a cage and you want to express yourself, some people just want to get out. Yeah. Pay me the same. You know what I mean? But let me get out of here. Right. And that was something that I experienced. So there are those people out there. Wow. That's really interesting that you say that. You know, um, first of all, thank you for saying that. You know, if you're listening mm-hmm. to this podcast, obviously, you know, this is uh, Kelly Jackson. She is an executive uh, career advancement uh, expert, coach, consultant. Um, she will help you get your whole life together. Um, as she has done many, many other people. Um, But what I think is so important about what you said is that it doesn't really matter how much money you make. You know, we're driven, we're in a society that uh, one loves speed and it loves to be flashy. And so you need, Mm -hmm. you need money to do all of this stuff, right? You got inflation, you know, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But what I think is very interesting about what you're saying is that when you actually do have that money, when you go ahead and you got that job or whatever, if you can't breathe as an individual, there's not gonna there's not gonna be anything you can buy that helps that. And over time, yeah. you're just not gonna want that job. And so at that point, I'm guessing people start reaching out to you and they're just like, yo, I got this lifestyle now, mm-hmm. but I can't do this anymore. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and it's it's like a double edged sword, you know, they're paying me good money, but I'm going home with headaches every day or I'm dreading Mondays and I'm crying going to work and uh, you know, I've heard it all. And oh, so wow. it's really about, you know, your your priorities and how you prioritize your life and what's most important to you. When I left corporate America, I was making the most money that I have ever made. I had, mm. you know, six figures quarterly bonuses, stock, everything. But it was, it wasn't serving me. 
it wasn't mm -hmm. benefiting me. I wasn't yeah. growing yeah. mentally and I couldn't, I didn't have the space to create. And that's what I wanted to do. And I would, I wanted it to, I wanted to do it for them. Right. But there was no space for that. So why not do it for myself? Ah, uh, that's good. You said I yeah. wanted to do it for them, but there was no space for that. So, um, oh, man, I'm going to tell a quick story. So when I, um, I kind of had in 2021, I kind of had like a, a bit of a breakthrough, I guess, you know, um, I had got a position, you know, as this technology director, it was allowed, it was going to, well, it appeared to allow me to get, do all the things that I'm really good at and uh, allow me to work with people and all this other kind of stuff. All great, right? It's pandemic going mm -hmm. on, great opportunity. Um, they were going to pay me more quotes, you know, at a job than I had ever made. Like I've always worked for myself and I've been able to make a pretty good living, you know, thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, but at one job, this would have been the more at most I had ever made. So I get into this position um, and it's exactly what you said. I had all these grand plans and ways that I wanted to innovate and do this and do that so we can be this awesome you know, machine, what kind of clients we were gonna bring in and, and all these different stuff I wanted to do, but there was no space mm -hmm. for me to actually do that. They were so committed to being status quo yeah, you know that it kind of drove me insane and then they wanted me they wanted like 24 hour access to me like whenever somebody didn't plan something they wanted me to drop everything that i was doing that exactly. i had been had on the books to yeah. go accommodate yeah. them and they were like well, well we paid you to it's just like well i understand that i'm employed here but that doesn't give you the right to continually change my own personal time mm -hmm. right and not because there's actually something going on but because you all refuse to implement the things that i'm telling you so that we can have more structure so that everybody has better time off the technicians have more time mm -hmm. to 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 respond to calls you know there's just a structure that we worked in and so i ended up leaving that job you know mm -hmm. um which i felt like was a really great move you know, but it speaks to what you're saying. You know, you can be super talented. You can be, you know, desirable on paper. But if you get into an environment where there's no space for you to actually grow, it doesn't matter what you're making. It doesn't matter what it looks like on paper because you still are in the same spot, miserable, you know? That's, that's right. That's what we've never seen in history before in the workforce where we have people just saying, you know what? I'm not, if you all are not going to value me and bring what I, you know, what I bring to the table, I'm out of here. Yeah. We've, we've come up in a culture and a society where you're loyal to your employer and mm -hmm. it is scary to leave. And they were seen as such a, like an authoritative figure that you don't just leave. People just saying, I'm not doing this anymore. Oof. No, here's what I want. And I'm going to go and find where that is or I'll get it on my own. That's wild. That's wild. Yeah. So, so how do you feel like, you know, I feel like we're all designed to do so specific things, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, you're clearly amazing at what you do. Uh, so what about, you know, your early childhood and your early career prepared you to be in the position that you are now, which is, you know, kind of a, a lifeline for your clients who are kind of drowning in their situation. So what, what prepared you to do that? Oh, wow. It was so many different things. Um, I had a rough childhood. There is a lot of, you know, childhood trauma, but I remember my sister and I used to play dress up, you know, as mm -hmm. all kids do. Mm -hmm. And um, I would always be the one that was like, um, wanting to be in a corporate environment. I'm from a small town outside of Chicago, nothing but cornfields. Oh, you, wow. People that look like me worked in uh, plants and distribution yeah. centers. So uh, I always wanted to work in an office. And so my childhood, I would pretend carrying a briefcase and working in an office. So when I think back and I'm like, this is something I always wanted to do. And so when I relocated here to Atlanta and um, I got you know a temporary job to start start my career, um, 
you know, going through the different companies because I moved around a lot intentionally mm. um, because I was a single parent. Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I was money motivated. Yeah. But I think just mentally, I was always uh, there. I didn't know what it looked like. You know, I just pretended when I was younger, but I always knew that I wanted to work in a corporate office environment so I could yeah. wear the clothes and the That's heels right. and yeah, do yeah. the things. And, you know? <laughs> so I always yeah. knew that. I never knew, I didn't know what it looked like, but I always knew early on. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And it's really interesting how, you know, our earliest childhood inclinations tend to be what we're drawn to the rest of our lives, you know, and we just continue to reiterate it in so many different ways. Um, and I, I just think that's that's really inspiring because we can often try to change children to make them something, you know, when in, in many ways they already know what yeah. they're designed to do. They may not know how, but they yeah. already have an idea of what they're here to do. You know, Absolutely. Which is, which yeah. is really interesting. So yeah. my next question for you is what is the first thing you think about um, in relation to our topic? Uh, what is the first thing that you think about when you hear the word investment? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The first thing that I think about, being totally honest, is ROI. Okay. That's what I associate investment with. ROI. Break down ROI. ROI. So return on that investment, okay. whether it's uh, money, if it's your time, um, energy, I always look at the ROI. If I'm going to go to the gym at five in the morning every day consistently for 90 days, the ROI that I want is those six pack abs. I want my <laughs> butt lifted. I want my arms chiseled <laughs> and I want that Coca-Cola. That's yeah. my ROI. Just tell me what I got to do to get that ROI, right? right? I know that I want to get to a certain level in terms of um, my my monetary goals. So I'm going to invest to ensure that somebody that has already done it can show me the way. Yeah. So I know the ROI, the return that I want. I know who I need to get there, right? So yeah. that's what I think about. Yeah, yeah. I thank you so much for breaking that down because I don't sure. think, um, you know, and I'm just speaking, you know, for all of us who are listening, I'm, I'm speaking based off of my own experience and what I've seen from other people, right? You know, I do mm -hmm. a bit of speaking and things like that um, with different young groups of, of, uh, of young people who have had all kinds of adverse uh, experiences. But what I think happens mm -hmm. is that we talk over young people's heads a lot. We talk over... And I say young people, right? There's a, a whole bunch of folks who just don't know, right? They just be liking mm -hmm. and clicking on stuff. They don't really know. Yeah. So um, I appreciate you breaking that down the principles of return on investment because that applies to everything, not just mm -hmm. your money, the relationships you have, the friendships mm -hmm. you have, the gym, the food you eat. You're always going to get a return on that investment. So I, I think that's 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 really great. So um, what do you feel like some of the, 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 the changes that you have seen in the industry? Um, what do you think of those changes and how do you feel like they affect your clients most specifically? Oh, wow. You know, with everything that has occurred over the past couple of years, there's been a myriad of changes. When we think about how we uh, apply to jobs even as basic and as simple as that um, going to the job boards and now you know there's companies popping up all over the place where they're, they're saying you know just send me um, your skill set mm -hmm. so um, the traditional you know resume job boards applying applicant tracking system just the traditional methodologies of, of obtaining a job is changing. And if you're still going through that or using the old way of doing things, then you're going to be left behind because the future of work is artificial intelligence. There's already profiles on LinkedIn right now that are not real people, right? And so um, now you're not sure who's contacting you. So mm -hmm. who's real and who's not? You have to sell yourself because you are a brand. 
That is so, so good. Oh my goodness, yeah. that makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. I think um, I grew up with the bread and butter skills. Did you I'm, Did you get mm -hmm. those? Like you're supposed to be able to type mm -hmm. and take notes and stuff like that stuff will always get you a yeah. job, you know? <laughs> and uh, I think that's great, but I don't, what are the bread and butter skills today? It's all about your skill set. Okay. Right now, so think about it. Back in the day when our parents and our grandparents, when they went to work, they used their bodies. My mom worked at General Motors for 42 years and she mm. was on an assembly line and she yeah. used her body, her body to put the brakes in, to yeah. put the yeah. steering wheel in, yeah. right? Even when I was working there, I worked at a company called Bergner's, it's similar to Macy's, and I did yeah. uh, price, I had a price gun. So I'm using my body <laughs> now, right? It's more about the six inches between your ears is the knowledge. It's yeah. your brain. What you know, that's everything. That's going to get you uh, the additional compensation. That's going to get you to the next level. Yeah. So right now, it's about the knowledge and the skills that you have. And how have you been able to acquire additional skills? How have you used those skills? Yeah. And what makes what you know better than the other person? Right. It's all about the skill right now. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so good. That's exciting to me. Really? I, Why? That's exciting because, you know, I, I'm from Gary, uh, Gary, Indiana. You know Ooh. about Gary, Indiana. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And my dad Michael used to Jackson. work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's for Michael Jackson. <laughs> I feel like, you know, want, the world sees Gary Indiana as Michael Jackson. I don't even think about Michael Jackson when I think about I know, Gary. I can tell. I, I, I don't know. I'd be like, oh, yeah, he's from here, too. Yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. Um, but I think it's exciting because, you know, it's like the revenge of the nerds a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think we have to understand that. Mark Well said something. Uh, Marquel Russell. If you all listen to this podcast, you're going to hear a lot of different nuggets that I pick up from CAU, Marquel <laughs> Russell, and all those absolutely incredible people that I am blessed to be around over there. Um, but one of the things he said that just really stuck with me, he said, you're going to either work from the neck up or the neck down, and the neck mm -hmm. up pays better. And I think for a lot of us, at least, you know, coming from where I'm from, from Gary, Indiana, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't think there was an option for us to work from the neck up. There was no yeah. options for us to just be real smart at something. You made fun of those yeah. kids, right? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Who were just really uh, very intelligent about a specific thing. And so to see the world shifting to a point where it's not as, it's not as um, lucrative, it's not as attractive to be a generalist. Nobody cares what you ran in high school, bro. Like, what mm -hmm. do you have? Like, what? no one cares about your 40 time. Like, what skills do you bring to the table? Like, what What can you do? And I think, oh mm -hmm. no, I had a whole alarm that went off. And I, I feel like, for me, it's exciting because it's such an open door. There are so many smart, young, men and women out there who are looking for a place to be um but they don't know what to focus on so yeah. hearing somebody who is all the way behind the curtain you know say mm -hmm. it's a skill set market just get good, get good at yeah. something don't worry about trying yeah. to do everything get real good at something you know mm -hmm. and work from the neck up use the six inches between your ears stop thinking that you know you just gonna do bull work the whole rest of your life which i mean if that is what you do and you are cool with that i'm not here to to minimize what you do for a living or what you aspire to but the goal of the podcast is to bring us in connection with people who have surpassed uh, um, some of our own mental, emotional, generational limitations. And so mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. your your insight on the skills industry is just super, super important and um, very helpful. What do you feel like are some of the best skills for young people or anybody who is wanting to change their career to have right now? Absolutely, communication. Mm. Think about how we've all been in, you know, our own 
isolated bubble, you know, these previous past two years. And we have had to uh, be able to communicate via video conferencing yeah. on the phones. You can't just walk down to so-and-so's office or you yeah. can't just go over so-and-so's house or uh, ping somebody or, or, you know, something along those lines. But you have to be able to communicate. And a study LinkedIn did a couple years ago, and they were talking about the year that we're in now. And they said the biggest skill gap are the soft skills, which mm. are communicating effectively, being able to organize your thoughts, being very detail oriented. So one of the things that uh, Elon Musk asked, you know, uh, his uh, candidates that come in he asked them to tell them about their biggest challenge and how you handled it. So you have to use critical thinking in order to be able to respond to that, thinking about your biggest problem and how you handled it, what were the results of that, the action that you took, all of that takes critical thinking. Yeah. And that is a soft skill. Yeah. So the younger generation, they get a bad rap because they say that the older mature uh, generation uh, can communicate more effectively, whereas the, you know, they say the millennials and the younger generation, they're not good at communicating. And so those are key skills that everybody needs, regardless of your age. Mm, that's really, really good. Because and now it, it kind of sends me on a little bit of a tirade here. Uh, so bear with me. <laughs> but that's the opposite of what's happening um socially the mm. world is needing better communicators mm -hmm. but socially right i don't know if this mm -hmm. is a word but algorithmically we're communicating mm. in shorter terms mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i feel like it's kind of a, a um misdirection you know, um, mm -hmm. you're you're learning to speak on platforms and all this other kind of stuff. We're micro dosing information, but then when you want to build a career, you're asked you're asked to maintain focus. You're asked to be able to string together all these thoughts, but you've been training yourself how to skip from one thought to the like giving yourself ADHD. You know what I mean? Every day on your phone. So how do we combat mm -hmm. that? Like for a candidate or for for a young person or somebody who's looking to change their career who might feel like they're not a terrible communicator, but you know, how do you start to cultivate those critical soft skills that make you um, a great candidate to help you break, have a breakout year, to may help you get a great salary and, and have a future with an organization? Yeah, yeah, no, those are, those, that's a great question and great points. And it really stems back to you. No one can, um, effectively tell you how to communicate. You have to practice makes permanent, right? We're not looking mm. for perfection, but permanent. And you have to put yourself in those types of situations and expose yourself to situations where similarly to what we're doing, right? Yeah. Podcast, audio listening is huge now. Yeah. And in order to be on a podcast, in order to have a podcast, you have to be able to communicate yeah. effectively, yeah. right? So, Social media is a thing. It's not going anywhere. But we can't have that as a crutch to say, well, the world is, you know, our attention span is seven seconds and it's diminishing to six seconds. Well, it's up to you to understand that you, in order to be disciplined, right, you have to focus. That means if you want a career, you will prioritize focus and being disciplined, which will result in being able to do a myriad of things effectively. So it's up to you to have that intentional focus on what it is you want to prioritize in your life. Oh Lord, y'all hear that? That's a lot, that's a lot because, um, oh, that sounds real good when you say it. How do you, how, how do you, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so how do you do it, right? Yeah. I, I, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. I just told my daughter this. Because I was out sick, you know, I was out sick for seven days. You know, we talked about that. So that pushed me back. That pushed mm -hmm. a lot of my productivity for what I needed to do back. 
And so I shared with her, I said, one thing I had to do was I had to turn my phone off and they have notifications now. You can put it on sleep mode and D&D and all that. So I had to do that. I was intentional about doing that so that I could catch up on what I needed to get done. Mm. But because I can spend three hours on TikTok, I love TikTok. <laughs> it's easy to do, right? You can do that. But for me, I have priorities. This was one, right? I wanted to get prepared. I have clients all day. I have to get prepared in order to be focused and have, um, you know, to be able to serve them. Yeah. Right. So it, it's not as hard as you think. I think we overcomplicate things. Sometimes right. we're too smart and we just think, you know, the world is like this and the world, it's not about the world, it's about you. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's no how to manual on how to be Kibway. There's no how to manual how to be Kelly. No, no, that would be a disaster. <laughs> that would be a disaster. So you said being intentional, being intentional. Yeah. You know, giving yourself those 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 breaks, um, structuring your day so that you have time to be in your own thoughts. You know, whether it is spending thirty minutes listening to a conversation spending 30 minutes reading a book you know taking a walk and listening to a podcast that is actually edifying mm -hmm. you know we have a real uh so you know how there's trash tv there's yeah. definitely a sector of and this is so rude of me all right y'all can eat me up in the comments if you want <laughs> but there is a a segment of podcasting and it's just like trash podcasting in my opinion really oh, what is trash podcasting? what would you say yes well, without calling out anybody, because, you know, do what you got to do, bro. But I just think we live in a world where every little bit of information helps um, mm -hmm. with all of the different influences that we have, especially in black and brown communities, you know, um, communities all around the world. But specifically, based off of my experience as a young black boy in the city, you really mm -hmm. need positive things to 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 be in your diet of information and to me there's a lot of podcasts who talk about the absolute base level of everything you know mm -hmm. um they talk about women all kinds of crazy ways they make up all these wild scenarios of well what if this happened and that happened what would you do <laughs> like bruh, first of all what like <laughs> you know, and I understand people want to be funny and I, I, I'm not trying to knock nobody's hustle, but mm -hmm. funny is not what's going to get you a job. Funny is not what's going to mm -hmm. change your your life, you know, and it's not to say that comedians and people like that aren't going to do well, but 80, 90 percent of y'all who think y'all funny are never going to get paid mm -hmm. to be funny. So mm -hmm. learning a skill set. It's far more advantageous. People are going to like you anyway. You're a good conversationalist or whatever like that. But putting out content mm -hmm. specifically that is is base, that is tears down other people, that is, you know, um, divisive. Um, I just I just think that's kind of like the trash TV of podcasting, right? If you think like Jerry Springer and the, super successful, oh, but what do you, yeah. you, where are you going to tell people you, is that something you're going to pride yourself on that you watch Jerry Springer, like, or, or any of those. And I think, so when you're saying all of this, you know, it makes me think about our topic. It's just like, how do we get intentional? about the time mm -hmm. investments that we're spending, you know, because you yourself said I could spend three hours on TikTok, TikTok if you let me, and I gotta watch yeah. myself. So where do you feel like yeah. you have spent the most investment within yourself in order to reach the level that you're at right now? Definitely, um, you know, in mentorship, mm. definitely, which opens up the access to different levels of information to different people uh you get exposure to information i mean we're in information overload yeah. and if you don't have a mentor or a coach that can uh, break it down in digestible chunks and yeah. sections and categories for you to um ingest it's just overload there's so yeah. much information out here so being intentional about um, you know, selecting that coach and or mentor or 
a Sam is what we call it in the corporate world, sponsor, advocate, or mentor. Ooh. Um, Ooh, being, that's intentional good. About <laughs> being intentional about, okay, I need someone to guide me and lead me and direct me and hold me accountable for these, um, to drive these outcomes. So intentionality is a personal decision because I'm not on TikTok watching the dances. I'm getting information, mm. right? And that's something that I'm intentional about that. They come through the feed, don't, don't get me wrong. And I have to zoom by because I'm intentional. I go in with a specific request. I need to know more about the stock market is down. It has this quantitative tightening happening. I want to know more. So hashtag quantitative tightening. That's all I'm viewing. So that's intentionality. Ooh. That's how you do it. Listen, you hurting them today. Listen, <laughs> listen. You know, um, I think that is so good because I think we don't have the right mindset on how we take in information. We just take in information. Mm -hmm. We just let it all run through the feed. And I think what you're saying, you can get leaps and bounds ahead of, you know, I, I, don't, I hesitate to say competition, right? Because, I mean, that's kind of a, mm -hmm. a thing all of itself. But you can get leaps and bounds above where you are right now just by using the strategy that you just said. Take a topic you mm -hmm. want to you want to learn about, hashtag it, yeah. and then just scroll through and listen to people's yeah. opinions about it. Listen to insight. Hit some of the links and the resources they'll put in their bios. You know, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are not doing that. They're just letting no. the algorithm educate them, which is why they have all these that's jagged, it. weird personalities. That's it. That's it. And and that's that is the the programming without getting too deep that we've been susceptible to mm -hmm. since childbirth. You go to school, they're programming you. You gotta yeah. raise your hand and ask a question. That's why when you grow up, you have a hard time talking in meetings. Mm. And you needed permission throughout your entire, you know, childhood, teenage years. Wow. So when wow. you get in your performance review and they say, you know, we need you to speak up more. We need you to. And then they come to me and they say, I'm an introvert. I'm quite, no, you've been programmed. It's okay. We're going to get, we, we have to unlearn some things. Yeah. Yeah. And you help your clients oh. do all of that? Oh my gosh. Listen, 80% of this whole thing about getting the job and getting more money and getting the, to the next level and getting the title, it's internal. It's not like external when people want to find their passion and find their, what's my passion and what's my purpose? It's not external. It's not an Easter egg hunt where you go find your purpose. It's in here. <laughs> it's in here. I'm looking for myself. <laughs> right, nice. I can't find it. Well, you you out there looking, you know, in the club. It's not in. It's that you ain't in there. It's you know what I'm saying. That's not yeah. the real who you are. You know, so yeah. nothing wrong with clubs, by the way. Nothing wrong with clubs. Right, okay. right. I was in there at one time. So. Yeah, <laughs> and I, you know, and again, you know, I, I want you know everyone who's listening and watching this back. You know, I want you to understand that this is not wherever you at is where you at. And we all yeah. have our, you know, I certainly was not the man that I am today, you know, four or five years ago. You know, mm -hmm. this has just been a progressive um, evolution of intentional investments. You know, so if you look up to me or you look up to Dr. Kelly mm -hmm. or you look up mm -hmm. to other people, just understand they're making intentional investments and you can too. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're mm -hmm. trying to um, help you understand a little bit. And I think, first, I want to talk about who the ideal client is for you. Because for anybody who is listening to this, if you're just thinking, well, they may not want to talk to me, or I don't know, or I don't, you know, uh, you know, she would probably, she's probably too expensive, or I, she looks like, you know. <laughs> for any of those people who in, undoubtedly have these narratives going on in your head, because we're human, right? 
and your mind is going to come up with all kinds of stories on why you should stay the same and safety there's nothing wrong with safety there's nothing wrong with being familiar with your area there's nothing wrong with comfort but none of those things in of themselves make them right you're not right because you're comfortable you're not right because you're staying in your safe zone and you're not right because you know uh, uh you you don't want to mess something up like it's always going to be a risk to do anything so for the people who are talking themselves out of sliding in your dms and asking you to help them because they've been stuck for the past year or so or their career hasn't really bounced back since the pandemic or you know they live in indiana and indiana pays less than almost everybody in the entire country you know um who are some of the ideal people who are maybe listening right now who you should say absolutely hit me up Those professionals that are, you know, they're unmotivated to even go to work. You know, Mm -hmm. Sunday they're watching the clock. They're already thinking about what I got to get up and go do this. Those, you know, professionals that are mid to senior level or late career, those are my ideal clients that are unmotivated. They feel stuck. They want to transition, whether they're working or not. They want more. Those are my ideal clients. And you mentioned being comfortable. There's nothing right about being comfortable. There's nothing right about that because you're not growing. And if you're not growing, it's like the dandelions. You know, have you seen those dandelions that's just dead? They just wilted over. They're just there. You're mm-hmm. existing. You're not living. No one should want to stay comfortable. <sighs> that's heavy. That's heavy. Now, what you want is what you want, but no one should want to stay comfortable. You're not growing. And if you're not growing, then what are you? You're just existing. You're just here. Yeah. You like that you work eight minutes from where you, you like you can go in and talk to Mary and Jane and Bob. You like you can go to the cafe together and go to lunch together. And your 401k is good. I don't know if it's so good right now, but mm-hmm. you know, you <laughs> like that all of these things, your premiums, I got everything set up. Um, it's a toxic environment. I don't get paid enough, but I'm comfortable. Who, who, where is that right? Mm. Oh, wow. Where That's is that so good? good. Yeah. That's so good. I was journaling the other day. Um, I got some different uh, life changes that I'm making. I'm super mm. excited about them. Um, but they are definitely, they're frightening. Um, sometimes I think, and I say frightening, and, and what I mean by that is just that when you're making a lot of changes quickly, um Mm -hmm. everything feels like it's falling apart because so many new things are happening so you're just like Mm -hmm. well how do i you know it's it's kind of a you go through a whole grief process too because you've created this whole thing and now you're growing and now the shoes that used to fit don't fit no more you you trying Mm -hmm. on a whole different human at this point and um Mm -hmm. and so when i was journaling i was i was writing down you know the things that were not comfortable the things that were you know, that were comfortable, the things that were making me somewhat fearful and things that I was very sure about, you know, and I realized, you know, just like you said, like, just because there may be in your prose column doesn't make them good things. It just means it don't scare you. Something not scaring you doesn't necessarily mean it's right. And I'm I'm so glad you said that because at least, um, the way I grew up, you know, you, you, you avoided sketchy situations. You avoided yeah. uh, um, things that were unknown. You avoided things mm-hmm. that were too risky. You know, we associate our value systems with like, oh, they're a risk taker, you know, they're a gambler or they're this. And, and I understand that there are certain principles and things that people live by, but I do think it's really interesting the way that your philosophy is, is is to get more uncomfortable um, and to grow. You know what? What do you feel like brought that about for you? Um, and what I mean by that is like, for me, there are situations that have happened in life that yeah. I wasn't sure I could make it through, um, and then I did. Mm-hmm. And on the other side, you're just like, wow well, maybe I should do things a little bit differently. Because if, if 
I'm meant to be here and I wasn't meant to lose in this whatever situation, mm -hmm. then what am I actually meant to do? So did you ever have one of those moments, um, you know, or, and, and, and tell us about a moment, you know, that, that gave you some of the insight that you have right now? Oh, which one do you want? My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just we, all you have, <laughs> we all have experiences in life that uh, make us who we are. You know, there was an instance where I was in a, in a actually it was one of our, our meetings and we were talking about traveling and we were saying how, um, you know, we were going to go solo and some of the, the women in the, in the group were saying, yeah, I travel solo all the time. And one young lady was, I'll never do it because of uh, uh, sex trafficking and things like that. And it was just very fearful. I'll never do it. I have to be with a group of people. And what that was, was that person's experiences mm -hmm. that made them feel that way. Other people said, well, you know, I'll do it. I've done it before. That's because of your experience. Doesn't make it wrong or right. It's just your experience. So for me, um, risk taking, I believe is a part of life. Uncertainty is a part of life. There's always gonna be something happening. We had 2008, the financial crash, and it, you know, it, a lot of people lost their homes because of predatory lending. But as a result, we have laws in place now. So there's always a negative and a positive. Yeah. But 2011, right? When 2011, when the, all the planes, right? Yeah. And now we have to go through TSA. But there's good things about that. And of course there were devastation, um, but now we have laws in place. We have, you got to take off all your clothes during the night <laughs> <laughs> when you go to the airport. Um, you know, 2020, you know, there's always going to be uncertainty. But if you set yourself up in this human life experience as a person that's just protected, you'll never mm. experience life. Mm. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. And you only get one. Yeah. You only get one. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so good. Y'all. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing so much with us. Um, I think it is just so incredibly inspiring to hear that there is so much new space opening, even in a time where everybody is, it's all doom and gloom. Everything's going down. It's, a bull market or bear market. I don't know all the different terms for the market there are. And there's all these different bad things happening, you know, but for you to say, if you're a good communicator, you're gonna win. And there's a lot of people who are great communicators, but they can't mm -hmm. see big picture. There are a lot exactly. of people who, who are really talented, but they can't mm -hmm. see big picture. Maybe everybody in their immediate circle is also afraid to travel is also afraid mm -hmm. to take risks, is also afraid mm -hmm. to do things, you know, which goes back to what you said about placing yourself in environments or exposing yourself to environments that are somewhat challenging for you um, intentionally. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to I wanna do two things. One, you know, at the end of every episode, uh, we have our, our guests leave us with a thought exercise, which is just something that we can walk away from this episode and get into right away um, so that we can start implementing skills and, and start implementing um, all of the incredible insights that we get from our guests. Um, because what I know for sure is that if you don't implement, your life is just not going to change. You know, um, if yeah. you just have a lot of information, but you don't act on it, you know, you're a serial connoisseur, but not an executor like that it's just not going to work and so the thought exercises give mm -hmm. us something that we can start on right away just try it out sure. you know um but i want to do two things one i want to do the thought exercise but before that i want um i want you to tell us three things that our listeners um should be focused on if they're intending to build um or launch a new career right so maybe you're stepping out of your current lane and you're going into a different lane or you're just like yo i don't want to be at this current job anymore i think i can do better somewhere else what are three tips 
that you you think they should start doing right away that will help them stand out better um, and start moving forward? Sure, great question. So I would say the first one would be either to reskill or upskill. So either hone your current skills or um, acquire some new skills within your industry to make you more of an asset. The second thing is within your industry, as we uh, kind of alluded to earlier in being a specialist and not a generalist, go deep, not wide. So become a master in what it is that you know. And if you don't like what you're doing, that means you need to be doing something else. So dive deep. Everyone goes wide. Everyone out here can tell you how to do a resume, but you can go to Word and it, there's a resume assistant. But there's very few that will get you to think um, the way that I do, right? So that would be number two. The third thing would be is to be, again, intentional. A prioritize your goals. There's a book called The Road Less Travel. And in there, as you know, um, the, the gist of the book is thinking time. Yeah. I would highly encourage you to take 30, 45 minutes. If you could do it once a week, that's great. But even if you can do it once a month and prioritize the next 90 days, you can do that now. That's an actionable step that you can implement and execute right now. Wow. Those are my three. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. Mm. Reskill or (laughs) upskill? Ooh. You said go deep, not wide. That Mm -hmm. is huge. That is huge. You all have your work cut out for you all. I am clearly going very deep into this podcast space. Um, You know, and I haven't said this yet, um, which is the first time I've said this over the air. Uh, But in um, August, uh, I'll be moving to Colorado to um, take on a position as a a podcast producer for an award-winning podcast network that uh, I learned about on LinkedIn and that they've reached out to me and it just proves, you know, one, what I've told my clients, but then also Mm -hmm. um, exactly what you're saying is to go Mm -hmm. deep, not wide. If that is, is there something that you know how to do, start solving those problems before they ever, your client ever faces them. And that's what makes Mm -hmm. you look like so much more of an asset, which is why this opportunity even hit my desk was because they said, Mm -hmm. well, you know, you, you stand out from other candidates because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So everything that, you know, uh, our incredible guest Kelly Jackson just told us (laughs) is so, so applicable because people are looking for answers. And even if you're not using the internet correctly, folks who are way above where you are, like, 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 uh, our, our guest, I keep wanting to call you Dr. Kelly. Um, <laughs> That's okay. You know, like Dr. Kelly, they're watching. Mm-hmm. And if yeah. y'all on the internet goofing off all the time, you're mm-hmm. ruining your own chances for the come up. Because just like, you know, just like you were saying, there's always an opportunity within the chaos. Mm-hmm. You just have to be good at seeing it you know absolutely um, so that's, wow congratulations oh, thank you thank you it's uh <laughs> i'm super excited about it um and i'm excited um, to learn even more stuff that i can help clients with um you mm-hmm. know because i feel like it's just a, a great opportunity for me to get even sharper uh i already met yeah. with some folks out there who um ideally uh will be doing some some more work in the podcast space um so mm-hmm. it just it's a win so and that's it's amazing beautiful amazing. out there i mean it's yeah i've heard, I've heard you gotta you gotta come check it out for sure yeah i've always wanted to come i always wanted to go to denver yeah oh man you gotta do it you gotta do it um <laughs> so for our thought exercise you know anything that you want to share with us you've already given us so 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 much um but anything that you want to share with us um for a thought exercise would love um, any uh, wisdom, any exercises, anything that we can start uh, and hit the ground running for the next 90 days with. So floor is yours. Sure, I think I'll just piggyback on what I just shared about having that that time to yourself, turn the phone off, put it on D&D and be intentional about you. Self-care is not all about the, 
you know, the manicures and the pedicures is giving yourself the space and the grace to put thought behind your priorities for your life, for your career, for your lifestyle, for your family, for your legacy. Give yourself the space by allotting time, 30 minutes, 45 minutes a week, um, even if it's during the month, and just write down three priorities. You know what, by Christmas, by Thanksgiving, I want to reach out and get a mentor, right? And someone to help me to align my goals to where I want to go. By um, Halloween, I want to um, update my resume, make sure my LinkedIn is polished, it looks professional, and that it is uh, attracting the opportunities that I want. And maybe a third one would be by, you know, I don't know, the middle of the fall or somewhere along those lines. Um, I want to learn a new skill. I'm going to take a course and I'm, there's so many free courses out there. It's ridiculous. <laughs> you can update your skill. Just decide, be intentional and execute. Wow. Decide, be intentional and execute for the next 90 days. That is so, yeah. so good. Um, I really hope all of you all who are listening to this are going to um, are going to execute uh, because you deserve better than where you are. Um, and um, if I have anything to say about it, I'm going to continue to make that apparent to you by the guests that we bring on um, and then by the way that I execute my own life. Um, the only reason why any of us are here to, to have these kind of conversations are because one, we're executing, but then two, it's the intentional investments. It doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means you're intentional. And, um, you know, we, we, I, we could not ask for a better, uh, uh, expert as far as, you know, how to get ahead in the, in the working world. You know, there's a lot of talk about being an entrepreneur and everything like that, but being a business owner ain't for everybody and mm -hmm. it's okay if it's not, Yeah. but understanding what you're telling us is going to be mm -hmm. so impactful for so many people who don't have any interest in being an entrepreneur, you know, um, yeah. So thank you so, 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 so much. Um, if you could please tell us how to find you, um, what people need to do right now who are listening and who um, are drawn to you and who need help with their mindset, who need help uh, getting into that next stage of their life. Um, what can, can you share that with us? Sure, absolutely. And uh, thank you again for having me. I uh, really appreciate that. So I am Careers by Kelly. Kelly with an I on all platforms with the exception of Instagram. That is I am Kelly Jackson. Again, Kelly with an I. Uh, the website is attractopportunities.com. From there, you'll get a free training as well as the opportunity to connect with me if you um want to and you want to you know dive deeper into your career goals and strategies so that would be the best way to reach out and connect to me and i look forward to talking to anybody who wants to have a conversation absolutely absolutely thank you so so much for for sharing with us if for all of you all who are looking to change positions who are are watching this um this whole, you know, kind of recession, kind of slow motion itself into all of our lives. Um, that doesn't mean you have to lose. It, the recession don't got to hit your house. And I think the reason why you can avoid that is because you're doing intentional things. Um, and, and maybe the next move for you is to reach out to Dr. Kelly. Maybe, maybe that needs to be what you do because, you know, um, just like there was a mass exit from the workplace, there's going to be a, ra a, a mass re-emergence into the mm -hmm. workplace. And you're going to want to have a definitive edge over other people. And that's why uh, um, experts like Dr. Kelly are here. And that's why we brought her on to Empower You Podcast, because, you know, we need to be covering all bases. 
you know, yeah, we like to talk into empower, uh, empowerment and mentorship and, and entrepreneurship, but we also got to be practical too and understand that for some of us who do enjoy working in jobs and stuff like that, what do we need to be doing? So definitely reach out to Dr. Kelly. I'll have all of these um, uh, links in the show notes. There's no excuse. If you're listening to this right now, go ahead and click the link, schedule a call with her, get her free training, whatever you can do, um, because it's better to execute than to just sit where you are. So um, thank you again so much. Anything you want to say to us on your way out? Thank you. (laughs) No, thank you. Thank you so much. And congratulations again. Oh, thanks. Thanks. (laughs) Thank you so much. All right, y'all. Y'all got your work cut out for you. Uh, Thank you all so much for listening. We appreciate you. Drop a link in the comments. Uh, uh, Let us know uh, where you're from, what you took away from the interview. um, And obviously go follow uh, Dr. Kelly. All the links will be in the show notes. Um, Tell her it was amazing. Um, But until then, I will talk to all of you guys later. Peace. Empower You Podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners. We discuss a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, cultural, and societal perspective. We believe that through tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. Subscribe to our channel and let us empower you.